Hi folks, it's uh, Steve here from analyticsinaction.com and the demo I'm going to do today is uh, how to use the Analyzer Analyze Key Influences uh, tool and it's a uh, data mining add-in within Excel uh, 2007 and 2010. Um, I'm going to talk about f uh, five key things. I'll talk about what is the uh, Key Influencer tool, uh, then what sort of business problems it can help answer, I'll then walk through a, uh, a live practical example. I'll also um, discuss uh, and compare it to the decision tree classification model uh, that is also found within the um, data mining add-in within Excel. And then I'll talk about um, some of the other resources you may find useful uh, for both data mining, um, uh, analytics in general, and also business intelligence and SQL Server. So what is the Key Influencer tool? Well, the primary purpose of the Key Influencer tool is to identify the key factors that influence an outcome that you're interested in. So what it'll do is provide a relative measure of the most important factors within a profile that affect an outcome. So in the example um, we have on this page, uh, we're looking at multiple pieces of profile information such as the number of cars a person has, the age, the region in which they live, commute distance and how those factors influence whether they um, will buy a bike or not. Um, this uh, add-in links to and, and uses SQL Server analysis services as the underlying analytical engine. So to, to make use of this tool you need to have a connection to a uh, SQL Server. Um, this is a great tool because it um, sits within Excel, so it's very accessible. It's um, wizard driven and you can get a result within about four or five clicks. Um, it's very easy to understand and as mentioned it um, just sits within, uh, with, within Excel, so um, it's very intuitive. So in terms of why you'd want to use um, the key influencer tool. It can it can help answer a number of sort of topical business issues. So as mentioned before, it's about linking profile information to an outcome, and that outcome may be either desirable or undesirable. Um, and so it can do things like identify the profile of um, products that are returned or products that have problems with them. It can identify um, the profile of say a training session which has low customer satisfaction results or it can also do things like predict um, the uh, products uh, customers are most likely to purchase based on their profile, the probability of a uh, customer um, uh, making an insurance claim or even fraud. So there's a broad range of applications for this, um, for this tool. So what I'll do is, I'll go, uh, as mentioned, I'll go over a practical example. In this um, example, it's a, it's a data set. The data set we're going to analyze is a whole lot of training information. Um, and it's looking at factors that were covered, or topics that were covered within the training session, and whether the number and type of topics were covered influenced whether the training session um, ran over time. And the outcome has been classified as either running over 20 minutes or under 20 minutes. Okay, so here we go. We've got the um, the data set um, here and it's a relatively simple data set. We have one row of data per customer. We have one trainer associated with, uh, with each customer. Uh, we also have information like the device in which the customer was trained on. So it's a, it's a particular type of smartphone. Um, we've got the total number of training topics covered within the uh, within the uh, session. We have some time with device uh, information, which is how long has the customer had the device. But then we've got a whole range of topics which are either covered or not covered within the uh, training session. And then we have a outcome here, which is what we're interested in: the uh, length of the training session. So it was either uh, it's binary, so it's either above over uh, 20 minutes in length or under 20 minutes in length. So with this um, um, data set, we, um, 
In order to access the Key Influences tool, the first thing you need to do is turn the data set into a table. It's only once the data is uh, in a table format that you can actually see the Analyze um, tab. So we'll click OK there, and now this Analyze uh, tab has, has appeared. So to access the Key Influences um, uh, wizard, we just go up into the left-hand corner here, click on the uh, on the uh, on the tab on the menu so the first thing we have to do is select what is the target so what do we actually want to know um, what yeah so what's the outcome so the column to analyze for key factors uh, so we want to know whether the sessions are over or under 20 minutes um, then we what you need what you can uh, what this little blue hyperlinked sort of menu is underneath is it selects the input columns. So I want to deselect training length session because that's the output. We don't want to have the input as the output um, as well. And I think all the rest of the topics can be included. So we click OK and run. And it's as simple as that to actually get the to run the analysis. What's happening now is it's shooting the data off to SQL, um, SQL Server. Um, this will just take a, a little while for me since it's going over a um, um, virtual private network. Um, going, it's actually shooting overseas and back. So, um, okay, so still reading the spreadsheet data. So, what happens? It'll read the spreadsheet data, it'll then send it off to the uh, SQL Server. Um, analysis engine it'll do the um, the grunt work and the actual crunching of the numbers within SQL Server and then it'll just shoot the uh, the results back um, to um, Excel so it's getting pretty close now that's done and in the next few seconds it'll spit some results back okay so I'll just move this down here so this is the um, result here. So um, that also adds in a little, a pretty good description here as well. So key influences and impact over the values uh, of training session length. So what it does is it um, ranks the relative impact of the factors of the inputs within the data set. So what it's saying is that if email configuration was covered within the training session. So email, configura uh, email configuration is yes. This, uh, that has the greatest impact on the session running over 20 minutes. Um, and a secondary uh, uh, influence is whether the trainer is Jenny. She also has a, a very um, strong effect on whether the session runs over time. Same with Jeff. And now then we get into a bit of a long tail down here in terms of other factors as well. And below that, we have um, the same sort of profile information for whether the session doesn't uh, is uh, under 20 minutes in length. And so this is really the result is really the inverse of the session running over time. Um, in this uh, example, the um, there are only two possible results. The uh, session was over uh, over 20 minutes or under 20 minutes. In many cases, you might have five or six different um, possible outcomes and this is where this next little step in the wizard is really useful um, it allows you to do sort of pairwise type comparison so you could compare one outcome with another outcome so for example if we had five different buckets so perhaps a session under 15 minutes session 20 to sorry 15 to 20 20 to 25 we could actually compare those various outcomes uh, to each other as in in a sort of peer format, you can't compare it uh, in more than more than two outcomes. But so this really will just be, because there's only two outcomes here, uh, it will produce the same result again. Here we go, slightly different format. Uh, so email configuration, no, it favours 20 minutes or less, which is sort of explained up here. Um, email configuration. Yes, favours over 20 minutes. So if there were multi other um, peers you want to look at, we could actually add another report and another report and another report. 
So that is really uh, as complicated as, as it is uh, to use the key influences tool. So not very complicated at all. While uh, we're looking at the key influencer tool, it's probably really timely to have a look at another tool which is very, um, produces a similar result but is also a little bit different as well. So it's um, probably quite good to do a bit of a compare and contrast between the key influencer tool and the, um, um, and the classify um, uh, function. So really the classify function is a decision tree. So um, what we can do with uh, this is it just goes through a, a very similar wizard, just select the data. We're um, going to, again, the, uh, the target is the session training length, and we uh, don't include the session training length if we're as an as a input. And then we set that to, uh, to run. Um, and then we just set it going. If you want to learn a bit more about decision trees, have a look at some of my other um, blog posts on um, on data mining. Uh, that'll give you a little bit more of an in-depth uh, view. But um, in essence, it's um, the way in which you set the um, the classify uh, model to run is is virtually the same as the. Uh, the key influencer um, tool. So what it's doing now, again, it's throwing the data back to the um, um, to the SQL Server, um, the analysis services component of SQL Server, uh, and it will just take a take a uh, minute or two to crunch through the um, through the data. And it'll what it does is it produces a a um, output called a decision tree. So a decision tree is um, Different from a um, uh, different from a uh, key influencer, and in that it uh, the, from the key influencer tool, and in that it looks at interactions between um, uh, between factors. And here we go. It's come back now. So here we go. So what it's said is that um, the most important factor. Um, influencing the whether a session is over time or under time. So I can just actually look at it here, click 20 minutes plus, um, is whether email configuration was done. So uh, in the total population, we see that 60% of the sessions ran over time. But if email configuration was, uh, was covered in the session, 73% of the sessions ran over time. In contrast, if the, um, if it wasn't, if email configuration wasn't covered, only 54% of the sessions ran over time. But the key difference is that we this technique also identifies that there was that there are interactions between factors. The key influencer tool doesn't look at interactions. So what we see here is that if Jenny covered email configuration, we see that 97% of her sessions ran over time. So that's the um, probably the key difference really between the uh, between the two tools is that decision trees, um, in my view, are a bit more powerful, but they um, a little bit less intuitive to uh, to under, understand. So in that sense, they um, they're probably more appropriate for the um, for more of an advanced uh, user. Okay, so this pretty much just summarises the uh, the comparison between key influencer, um, the key influencer tool, and decision trees. Um, so yeah, that pretty much wraps up uh, the demo. Um, so um, feel free to come across and have a look at my um, blog, analyticsinaction.com. I've got lots of uh, information there on um, on analytics, um, SQL Server. Um, um, data mining, uh, you name it. So um, yeah, come across, ask any questions, um, suggest uh, any other videos perhaps that you might want to see, um, and also subscribe up to subscribe to the uh, the channel if you um, thought this uh, video was um, was useful.